Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to CSV Bank Limited Q1 FI23 Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Manish Shukla from Access Capital Limited. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Shukla. Uh, thank you, Nirav. Uh, good evening, everyone, and on behalf of Access Capital, I welcome you all to this earnings call. We have with us Mr. Pralay Mondal, MD and CEO, Mr. BK Divakara, CFO, and their senior management colleagues uh, to help us uh, understand the results better. I would request Mr. Mondal to make some initial remarks, after which we can open the floor for Q&A. Uh, over to you, Mr. Mondal. Thank you, Manish. Uh, good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining the call. Um, uh, let me just briefly tell you uh, our perspective on the global as well as what's happening uh, in the macro, followed by how the bank has performed, and then our CFO, Mr. Devakara, will take you through the numbers, and then we'll open it up for the Q&A. So on the, uh, 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 on the macro side, I think we all know that the world is going through a very difficult phase of uh, you know, inflation and tightening of uh, financial conditions and among elevated financial vulnerabilities. And uh, FOMC is expected to increase the Fed rates again, anywhere between 75 to 100. The debate is, uh, you know, uh, uh, within 75 to 100, there's no doubt about another hike, which means RBI may have to look at also a hike between 35 to 50. Uh, the uh, key question is, can the uh, uh, central banks have a soft landing and we'll get and watch uh, how it uh, works out. But mostly it is expected the front loading of rates uh, uh, will be uh, used as an instrument to have a soft landing of the huge uh, key, uh, QE challenge which is facing the global economy today. On the domestic market side, I think uh, uh, most of the actually on the Indian domestic side, things are looking a lot better. Some of the high frequency indicators like GST collections, railway flight, electricity, etc., uh, is uh, looking better. The IIP numbers were better. Uh, uh, on a higher base, the inflation is also stabilizing a little bit. Uh, uh, of course, we know that it has touched 80. Uh, RBI yesterday also said, I think, that they will um, uh, use um, whatever instruments possible within. 10% of their forex reserves to um, uh, stabilize the rupee, which means around, uh, you know, uh, we should see somewhere between 79 to 81 the rupee. Uh, the monsoon has been good. Uh, we are seeing a pick up in manufacturing activities, uh, and hopefully the commodity prices uh, uh, has come down and hopefully it remains there, though the oil prices has gone back a little bit, back to around 105 levels. So broadly, when we look at the uh, uh, global as well as the local macro, uh, some amount of uncertainty will always remain. The CAD uh, also hopefully should be able to contain within 3%. So uh, broadly, uh, that's where we are today. Uh, on the uh, uh, credit side, I think the banking ecosystem is growing between uh, on the liability side around 10% and on the uh, asset side, it's growing around 13%. In CSB, of course, as you have seen, the result that we have grown our liability by 9% and assets around 17%. So we are broadly in line with where the market is. Maybe assets we have grown marginally higher, but on our small balance sheets, a little bit here and there doesn't matter. We have to look at a slightly longer term perspective. What do we need to do? Uh, I'm not going through the detailing of the numbers. So we're going to look at it, but broadly on profit has improved by 9% on a Q on Q basis. Uh, net profit has uh, gone up on a Y O Y Y basis now by 88% to 114 crores. Uh, we also have significant provisioning buffer close to 200 crores over and above the regulatory requirements, of which the COVID provisions itself is around 106 crores. Uh, we could still maintain the NIM, though I last quarter had said that NIM will be under pressure, but we could still maintain the NIM uh, around 5% because our cost of funds still were able to hold uh, at a uh, in fact, it has come down from 4.21 to 4.10 this quarter. That may not sustain for long because, cost, uh, obviously, cost of deposits are going up in the ecosystem. Average CASA growth has been 10% Q on Q, 15% YOY, 
this is a good story gradually evolving because you know, average kasa is something which augurs well for us uh, net advance as i said before grew by 17% gold portfolio did very well 26% year on year and 8% q on q so it continues to do well and yield on advances has remained at a similar kind of a level of uh, 10.62 percentage the asset quality like most other banks who are coming out with results uh, similar we have also done well uh, pretty well i must say we uh, fared well on all indicators gnp and npa uh, pci is almost 90 percent and if you take the covid provision it crosses 100 uh, excess uh, standard asset provisioning is higher than nnpa and, uh, and we are uh, continuing with our accelerated NPA provisioning, as I said before. Uh, on the CRAR, I think we are one of the highest in the industry, 25%. Uh, the low proportion of risk weighted assets compared to the industry primarily because of gold loans. Uh, and uh, book value per share has uh, uh, been elevated to 151 rupees, EPS 26.8, and ROE close to 18.5 to 19%, uh, which is um, which was 12.65% in Q1 to Q22. So I think on ROE side also, we have improved a lot. Uh, we plan to, as I said before, we plan to open around 100 branches every year. Uh, we are trying to front load that this year in uh, the first half, 52 locations have already been approved. And uh, on technology side, we are making uh, significant process progress, uh, whether it is corporate LOS, retail LOS, um, you know, uh, uh, LMS, um, looking at uh, how we want to look at the core system. Everything is changing because if we have to add more products, which I promised last quarter, we first have to create the uh, basic foundation. Uh, and once we have all these things right, then scaling up the retail businesses, etc., because that requires technology leadership process uh, uh, and uh, channels, partnerships, everything. And because we'll focus a lot on the partnerships for customer acquisition, uh, we will ensure that, uh, that our technology is uh, up to the mark to scale these things up, and that will take little time. So we will see gold on continuing to uh, do well for us for the next uh, 12 to 18 months, and then also it will do well, but as a ratio, other products will start picking up after that. And uh, uh, launch of credit cards will happen very soon. Uh, and uh, gradually we will launch most of the other products. The last thing I would say before I hand over to Mr. Devakara is that everything which we are uh, working on a planned manner for the next two years, five years, and eight years kind of a scenario of going up to FY 2030, uh, almost everything is on track as per plan. Uh, our, uh, we will not move away from investing into the franchise to build a, a full service bank. And uh, we will uh, continue to uh, focus on uh, leadership, technology, distribution, products, and partnerships. And uh, more importantly, we need to add a lot more customers. And uh, you will see almost every year, uh, at least for the next few years, we'll be doubling our acquisition base of customers because our primary focus will shift to liability. Uh, as we grow, I think asset growth will happen. To support that asset growth, we need to build up granular and stable liability, and that requires a lot of customer acquisition, which in turn will also help us in building our cross-sell on fee businesses, retail asset businesses, uh, on the SME side, supply chain everywhere. And also you'll see that the core fee business, which is things like insurance, processing fee, asset, uh, uh, related fees, commission fees, LCBG fees, all of these core uh, income, which I had said last time, also will continue to grow. And this quarter also we have grown and will continue to be our mainstay going ahead. Uh, of course, we'll have, we have some challenges on the, like most banks have, but our challenge is much lesser on the, uh, on the, on the treasury side. And uh, also, as Mr. Divakar, when he takes his commentary, he will share that how the PSLC income, we took a very tactical view of not having, uh, uh, you know, of not selling our PSLC book in this quarter, but buying as much as we could on the uh, as much as we could on the PSLC side, uh, we bought so that we could take care of the uh, uh, full year PSLC requirement on the micro side. But we are still sitting on our entire uh, PSLC book, which you can sell. So we will maximize those uh, revenues uh, uh, in the next two to three quarters. 
So with that, um, uh, I assure everybody that whatever we said that we will do to build our franchise, we'll continue to do that. And I hand over the uh, conference to Mr. Devagara to take us through the numbers. Good evening, friends. I will be making a brief presentation about the performance of the bank for the quarter ended 30th June 2022. Unaudited financial results of the bank for the quarter ended 30th June 2022, which is subjected to limited review by the statutory central auditors, was taken on record by the board of directors of the bank at its meeting held today. Uh, friends, June 2022 is yet another good quarter for the bank in terms of capital ratios. As you may be aware, capital adequacy ratio is one of the best in the industry at 25.46%. Asset quality, so NPS are at the historical low at 0.60%. Liquidity, so LCR is much above the RBA stipulation and uh, stood at 147%. Earnings is consistently growing and profitability track record is maintained. Our primary objective of building the balance sheet for the future continues in this quarter as well. The buffer provisioning built during peak COVID times remains untouched at 106 crore. Whatever fresh slippages that have happened, so it has been provided from out of our current year's profits. Bank continued with its policy of making accelerated provisions for NPS, much above the regulatory requirements. If we reckon these two additional provisions uh, made, PCR will go even than 100%. Accumulated losses in the balance sheet is gradually coming down and expected to be wiped out completely during this year. Deferred tax assets created on account of accumulated losses has already been wiped out. So we continue to follow conservative accounting policies on uh, SR's. SR's level has substantially been brought down. All these measures have strengthened the balance sheet to a larger extent. Now let me take you through the main highlights of the published working results. Net profit of the bank increased from 61 crore for the quarter ended 30th June 2021 to rupees 114.5 crore during the quarter ended 30th June 2022 on the back of lower provisions. Provisions for NPS has come down drastically during this quarter. In other words, net, uh, net profit increased by 88% on year on year basis. Uh, as I said earlier, so it is uh, an account of uh, lower provisions that has been uh, provided during this quarter. Last year, during this period, we had provided 97 crores, as against which we uh, we were required to provide only 1.20. It's a reversal of 1.20 crores during this quarter. Uh, sequentially, though, it looks net profit has fallen from 130.70 crore in March 2022 to 114.5 crore in June 2022. It is on, a, on the back of a higher reversals of provisions during the last quarter. Operating profits of the bank stood at 154.7 crore during this quarter, while operating profits have decreased on year-on-year -year basis from 174.7 crore to 154.7 crore. Sequentially, it has increased by almost 13 crore over March 2022 level. Excluding treasury profits and PSLC premium, Operating profits, in fact, have increased by 10.50 crore on a year year-on-year basis. Net interest income for the quarter stood at 311 crore, clocking a year-on-year -year growth of 16%. For March 2022 quarter, the growth of uh, net interest income is 2%. NIM has improved from 5.04% in June 2021 to 5.17% in June 2022, or by 13 bits. On volume side, average advances grew by 10%. On mix side, average CD ratio improved from 75.8% to 79.50%. Average yield on advances remained at 10.62% for both the quarters, that is June 2021 and June 2022. Yield on investments reduced from 6.38% to 5.79% during this period. The impact of reduction in yield has been offset by reduction in cost of deposit from 4.48% in June 2021 to 4.10% in June 2022. From Q4, uh, from Q4 position of 5.42%, NIM has reduced by 25 bits to 5.17% due to reduction in yield on advances from 11.19% to 10.62% or by 57 bits. It is fifth quarter in a row that NIM is in excess of 5%.
time lag of one quarter for resetting the interest rates has since been changed to T plus one day, effective from 1st of July 2022. This will effectively take care of passing on the cost to the customers instantly. As against the treasury pro profit of 19.50 crore in Q1 of so financial year 2022, treasury profit of Q1 of financial 2023 stood at 5.2 crore, impacted by the upward trending interest rate. Due to reduced the PSLC premium in the market during June quarter, we have adopted a wait and watch policy and decided not to book any PSLC income this year as against 12.50 crore booked in Q1 of financial year 2022. Excluding treasury profits and PSLC premium, other income has increased by 10 crore on year-on-year -year basis, powered by growth in commission income by 7 crore. Sequentially, non-interest income excluding treasury profits has decreased by 7 crore. Annual savings bank account and debit card related charges of rupees 15 crore is accounted only in Q4, and this has caused the decrease uh, quarter on quarter basis. Soft cost during the quarter has increased by increased from 97 crore to 122 crore or by rupees 25 crore. Payroll cost has gone up by 14 crore as the edge count increased from 4508 as on 30th of June 2021 to 4780 as on 30th of June 2022. EIS 15 provisions increased by 11 crore with increased provision for DA for pensioners in view of the CPI increase. Compared to Q4 of financial year 2022, stock cost is lower by 21 crore. As Q4 of financial year 2022 included annual incentive of rupees 13 crore and one-time ESOP cost related to previous MD and CO provided. Other operating expenses has increased from rupees 67 crore to 89 crore year on year. Between June 2021 and June 2022, Number of branches has increased from 514 to 603, and this has caused increase in rent and other expenses. BC type costs increased by rupees 5 crore. Further, we had bought PSLC for meeting the shortfall in micro enterprises target, causing a premium payout of rupees 3.70 crore. Cost to income ratio has increased from 48% to 58% on year on year basis and decreased from 61% to 58% quarter on quarter. As we are on the expansion mode, cost will go up in the short run, but eventually it will taper down over the year. Credit cost. Provision for NPS during the quarter has been a reversal of 1.20 crore as against additional provision of 97.3 crore in Q1 of financial year 2022. While there was an additional provision requirement of 16 crore on account of precious leakages, or migration of existing NP accounts to a higher provision category, the same has been offset by recoveries in technically return of accounts of equal amount. For Q4 financial year 2022, reversal of NPA provisions stood at rupees 37.3 crore. ROA has increased from 1.03% to 1.75%. Book value per share has increased from 144 as on 31 3, 2022 to 150.7 as on 30th of June 2022, or by 5% quarter on quarter basis. Year on year basis, it has grown by 26% from rupees 120. Gross NPA at rupees 293. Gross NPA at 293 crore, or 1.79, has remained more or less flat as on 30th of June 2022 compared to 31 3, 2022. Net NPA has come down below rupees 100 crore mark to rupees 97 crore as against 107 crore as on 31st of March 2022 and rupees 444 crore as on 30th of June 2021. PCR now stands at 90.5%, up from 89.7% as on 31st 2022 and 70.2% as on 30th June 2021. Capital adequacy ratio continues to be comfortable at 25.46% as on 30th June 2022, as against 21.63% as on 30th June 2021, and 25.90% as on 31st of March 2022. Liquidity coverage ratio stands comfortable at 147%. Leverage ratio stands at 9.27%. M-duration of AFS portfolio stands at 0.83.
Total advances grew by 9% year on year basis and CASA ratio stood at 35.14% as on 30th June 2022 as against 33.09% as on June 2021 and 33.66% in March 2022. Advances grew by 2,324 crores uh, to 16,142 crores on year on year basis, registering a growth of 16.83%. Gold loan grew by an impressive 26.30% year-on-year basis and 8.17% on quarter-on-quarter basis. With this, share of gold loans to total advances now stands at 41.6%. To conclude, I can say bank has done well under most of the parameters. We will build on this position further during the coming quarters. Now, I will stop here. Thanks for hearing me patiently. We, we are happy to receive your questions. Thank you very much. We'll now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. First question is from the line of Mona Khetan from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, so my first question is on the uh, gold yields in the gold book, which have declined by about 120 per Q1Q. So I understand that the gold NPA have normalized and to some extent uh, uh, lower recoveries will also pack the yield. So just wanted to understand this 120 bit decline, how much is out of recoveries and how much is owing to uh, uh, the lower yields from teaser loan? So uh, uh, let me, uh, thanks Mana for your question. So uh, uh, that breakup will give you but uh, on a high level, what is happening is mm -hmm. that uh, because of the uh, easy liquidity that was available last year, uh, we had seen a, uh, uh, seen a little bit of a uh, uh, Ill, Ill reduction on the gold side across the industry. And hence, to remain competitive, uh, we had also done that. But as we talked last month, uh, the industry is normalizing, so we have also taken the uh, interest rate up and also processing fee up on the gold loans. So we should see in the next one or two quarters by the time our overall cost of funds starts going up because it is bound to go up, right? Given the way the interest rates are. Uh, by the time our main portfolio, which is gold loan, which is around 42%, we should see the yields uh, again starting to uh, go up again. So uh, so that's, that's broadly at a high level where we are. Mr. Divakar, would you like to answer the breakup between... Yeah, yeah. So, interest reversal is 7 crores during Q4 of last year. And this year in Q1, we have not reversed any income. So, okay. Okay. Got it. Last year, we got 7 crores, but this year, quarter, we couldn't get any income. So, so this is last year, we have not got any income this year because of uh, the NPA reversal. NPA has remained, uh, you know, uh, there was no major slippages. So to that extent, uh, primarily this is uh, pure play uh, yields which are coming. But as I said, we are already improving our yields, so we should start seeing a uh, reversal in our, uh, uh, you know, yield uh, uh, in gold loan again. Sure, but in terms of bit, uh, if I could understand a bit, uh, in terms of how much bit contribution is from the recoveries, which is not playing out this quarter. The interest reversal component, the seven crore component. Seven crore from interest recovery. This year, nothing is the interest recovery. That's true. That's what we said, Mona. That interest recovery last year we had got seven crores. This year right. we have got nothing because we didn't have nothing to recover. Right. So the one twenty bits. How much would be the impact uh, of this seven crore? Uh, is what I wanted to understand. The the seven crore not being there. Maybe 20, 30 bips will be around that and okay. rest will be okay. probably due to Sure, sure. 
got it got it that was helpful so another probably uh, 80 bits or so uh, owing to just uh, 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 natural but decline in yield still normalized yeah right right i understand that that's an industry thing yeah yeah got it got it sure got it and uh, in the sme book uh, you know uh, despite it being a key focus for you uh, Uh, we are not seeing growth coming by uh, this quarter so uh, w- what's really holding you back uh, on the sme growth side yeah so on the sme book what's happening is that we have two parts to the sme book there is a old book and we also have a uh, uh, little bit of a term book in the sme so what we are trying to do two things the old book is gradually uh, running off so and not necessarily we are uh, you know renewing many of the etc and some of the term book also runs off so uh, we so that that's where uh, the issue is on the same book also what happened okay. this this quarter is the utilization level was slightly lower uh, 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 because some of our smes are in uh, not textile and all of that where the input costs started coming down uh, this year uh the commodity and the input cost etc so because of that i think the utilization came down slightly uh, uh but uh, more importantly i think uh, the term loan uh, term book and the old book is running off uh, but now we see that it will start going from there so we see um, uh, one of our major growth the largest growth will come from gold followed probably by sme this year so we see a positive on the sme going from here sure sure and <clears throat> on the retail book side uh, you know in terms of the new products and the role of those you mentioned we are on track but uh, uh, does that imply that by the end of this fiscal most of the retail products will be rolled out or where are we on no, this uh, uh, see rolled out product roll out will happen from a credit and product perspective but mm-hmm. really in the real sense to roll out products you need the technology backing so once we have the los lms play, uh, in place and after that you give, need to give it another 6 months 9 months 12 months to start really see the pick up so you uh, you will see most of the products rolled out by the end of this year but to see the pick up really in the right. momentum of that business it will take another year so take it another 18 months got it got it and we don't want to make mistakes because in retail if you don't have system processes and you uh, roll out products then you can be challenged because retail is one business where everything should be in place before you press the accelerator so we are not willing to press the accelerator but after 2024 uh, retail and that's exactly our plan 20 uh, next two years five years and uh, seven years when you look at this uh we clearly have retail which is going to be the primary growth momentum and as the business mix uh, we expect by fy 28 29 the retail to be uh, uh, one of the largest component in our entire, entire asset book hmm hmm sure and uh, you know last year we enjoyed we had a lot of benefits from a good recoveries on the credit cost front we had a good benefit from the gold recoveries uh, which resulted in negative credit cost for a large part uh, now that this book has largely normalized what sort of credit cost can we expect uh, you know going forward so uh, see first of all we don't want to have a slippage and then reverse it and feel happy about it so i think the best way to handle a business is that slippage itself is controlled and managed well even in this quarter we had a marginal negative credit cost oh, yes. 1.20 uh, so uh, so 1.20 of course it's a marginal almost ne- close right. to zero but technically still it was negative so uh, uh, so the way i look at it is if, if you do, the, do not have slippages will not have recovery also so we are okay with that kind of a model mm. and then uh, uh, business as usual will take over so actually if you ask me i'm quite happy with that kind of a scenario okay so in general the credit environment remains extremely benign is what you see at this point i think we have see for us it has been uh, last few years we have done pretty well on the credit side it's just that the gold loan was a very technical right. kind of a issue, right 1975% ltv so this mm. we had to go through this cycle we have gone through the cycle now we are back to where it is normal so uh, i think we should not 
uh, see too much of slippages and we and and resultant we should not see too much of recovery also i think that's the way it will play out Mm-hmm. So sure, got it. And just two data keeping questions. So, uh, what's the share of PTC based employees as on today, uh, and what's the floating and EBLR link book in your case? So we have around uh, four thousand eight hundred employees. Out of that, as uh, uh, IBA will be around thirteen hundred. So rest uh, uh, will be around three thousand five hundred. Will be around uh, CTC. So that's one, okay. and we will add another close to 2,000 people this financial year, and all of them will be CTC. So this 3,500 will probably go somewhere between five to 5,000, and IBA will be around 1,200 or something like that, 1,250 something like that. So as a ratio, this will constantly come down because we are expanding our base as well. Uh, what is the second question? EBLR. What is the question? Uh, what what is- share of e- floating rate book, and of that, how much is EBLR linked? Okay. Uh, I think we have around 50, uh, 50, 54% 50, 50, 50, 50. is fixed rate of interest yeah. loan only, and MCLR linked is 31%. And the uh, repo linked, that is EBLR, is uh, almost 7 uh, 8%. So I'll give you a flavor, uh, Mona. So uh, typically, uh, uh, the uh, repo, repo link is uh, mostly SME. Yeah. Uh, the, okay. Uh, T bill link is mostly wholesale, uh, means mid market and uh, ECG uh, emerging corporate, and uh, wholesale is broadly 50-50 in terms of term and uh, uh, term and uh, floating, and the same is almost all on the SME side. Retail is mostly uh, uh, mostly fixed. I think some home loans is there which is floating. So I think that's where it is. So Mr. Devagara gave you the overall picture: 54, 46, right? 54 is fixed, rest uh, MCLR is 31%. MCLR is MCLR is that is repo linked is uh, already 8%. 8%, 8%, 8%. Basically, SME advances only, and yeah. that's working at the loan. That's right. Currently, we will continue at MCLR rates only. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, can you just come again on the EBLR and T bill part? T bill part is uh, 5%, 4.89%. Okay, MCLR 5%. The is about 8%. So under, okay, okay. So, uh, so repo is just 3% or thereabouts? 42% of our advances comprises of gold loans only. So here more or less it is fixed right. rate of interest. Really. That is why overall if you can look at it, uh, our fixed rate of loans is uh, high at 54%. Rest is 46% distributed amongst uh, MPLR, EPLR and uh, treasury related uh, loans. Sure, sure. Got it. Thank you so much. I'll come back in this. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Nirmal Bari from Samiksha Capital. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my first question is on, uh, uh, during the commentary, you said that over the next uh, uh, or two years, you will be focusing on liability side in retail. Uh, so, is this a change of strategy from early? Sir, sorry to interrupt you, but your voice is breaking terribly. We were not able to hear your question. But I got your question. Let me, let me respond to it. There is no change in strategy. Liability, always we said, is a function of how much. See, there's no point raising liability and not utilizing it, right? So liability has always been based on a need. Now we are seeing a consistent growth over the next many years because we are building our retail. The gold loan is looking consistent. SM is also building up, wholesale is also building up. So from that perspective, we are more assured of a consistent credit growth. And in a rising interest rate scenario, we have to be more focused on a liability franchise because otherwise cost of uh, borrowing can go up, right? So to that extent, uh, when the growth comes back, we have to focus on liability. And when you say look at liability, we have to look at granular and consistent liability. That's why we are saying that focus is on liability just because we are seeing the growth coming back to us right now. Okay. Uh, my second question was uh, during the previous call and post that in some interviews, you talked about that we uh, we would be looking to grow at around 1.5 times the industry growth rate uh, on the advances si- uh, side. So uh, within that, obviously for the, uh, for the current year and probably next year too, gold loan is expected to uh, drive it. But... Uh, Outside of gold loan, what kind of growth should we expect? Should we should we think of it as yeah. growth closer to the industry growth rate, or 
or how it uh, so the way it will work out the way it will work out is when i had said that in the commentary i said on a cagr for 3 years we will be around one and a half times of the industry growth rate okay i didn't say this year i said on a cagr of 3 years so yeah. but obviously uh, we cannot catch up to that level unless we are at least at the industry level this year so we'll definitely be better than industry level this year that's one coming to uh, composition i think next 12 months at least we will uh, the primary growth will come from uh, gold on but most other negative carry which we had in retail or sme and some of the even uh, some part of wholesale etc all that will go away almost every business will now contribute positive so that itself is one because we have a old retail book and we have a old sme book where run off happens to cover that up we have to uh, build build retail as well as sme book uh so and also because a uh, uh, fair part of our uh, wholesale book is also term loan that runs off so we have to fill it up so we are doing two three things one is we are trying to gradually uh, increase our uh, ratio of working capital uh, in our business okay. which ensures that run offs are lesser going ahead b is uh, definitely retail will start picking up meanwhile uh, the filler will happen through sme and wholesale to some extent and within the sme and wholesale more will happen through sme but agree and uh, microfinance that book and microfinance is important because that helps us in managing our micro and some of the other psl requirements so that is something we'll uh, retain focus and agree uh, you know first quarter all in the, all the banks have suffered on the microfinance because of the regulation change uh, uh, but now i think things are settling down so we should be able to see growth from agree and microfinance portfolio uh, we will see uh, neutralization of negative carry on the Uh, a negative growth on the retail we should be able to see some positive growth in retail this year we will see definitely positive growth and uh, good growth in sme and we'll see some growth in wholesale and gold will grow much faster than last year probably will grow even faster than uh, where uh, where it is right now what we saw in this quarter so we'll grow even faster so overall i think uh, next 12 months at least i see gold going to almost 45% of our portfolio and then gradually tapering down because some of these other products and businesses will start picking up okay but uh, can we think of uh, this quarter as the as the bottom in terms of uh, non gold book uh, yeah i think i think that's that's well put i think that uh, that pretty much it yes okay and uh, i had one book uh, keeping question on the same uh, lines in the presentation you give a split between uh, gold and other segments so uh that number adds up to uh, 17066 uh, while the balance sheet figure for advances is 16142 so uh, what is the difference there uh, that is technical rate up that is in balance sheet what we have shown is net of technical rate up that has been done at the end of the level that's why 600 so compo- composition whatever that we have given it is inclusive of return of accounts also provision concerns for net advances net of net advances net of provisions net of return of accounts okay okay sir uh, yeah i'll i'll get back in the queue for further questions thanks thank you the next question is from the line of parthu shah from anubudhi advisors please go ahead uh yeah good evening uh my question is with respect to the uh, advances growth so on q on q basis uh, the low advances have grown by 2 percentage so is it uh, possible that we can grow it uh, in this fiscal at 20 percent see that possibility always remain uh, that will be our attempt uh, but depends on how uh, the overall ecosystem plays out but uh, we are uh, i mean that's quite a, that's definitely possible if we do it at well yes okay and majorly the uh, contribute i told you the major contribution will come from gold followed by yes. uh, sme and to some extent wholesale and then uh, agri microfinance and then uh, the negative carry on the uh, retail will be taken care of so we will start seeing neutral to positive growth on retail okay yeah and my next question is with respect to the number of branches 
so in march and we are having 603 branches and as on june we are having 604 branches so uh, there's only increase of one branch so when I, when we are targeting a year so i mean the uh, there's no momentum in increasing the branches so are you seeing very much uh, high increase in the number of branches in q2 or q3 where uh, where the addition would be happening in the number so, of branches so what will happen is if you had a equation of saying that what is the average man days in a branch this year will be much higher than last year because a lot of our last year branches uh, came in the last quarter so this year we are trying to see that we don't have to wait for last quarter for uh, most of the branches most of the branches will come in q2 and q3 as we are talking 52 or 54 52 branches already work is on so they will be gradually rolled out in this quarter itself and uh, and then uh, q3 we should be able to see rolling out almost 70 80 percent of the branches so we are, we are very limited branches in the Q4. So we consciously have taken a call uh, to uh, to get some productivity in the branch uh, rollouts this year, earlier, earlier, uh, earlier in the year. So that that's where it will be. On an average, we should have 50 branches in the whole year if you take a mandate kind of a thing. Okay, so uh, by the end of this year, I mean March 23, uh, would that be a net increase of 100 branches? 100 percent okay 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 got it and my next question is with, with respect to casa ratio so as of now we are having so do we see uh this ratio going to 40 45 percent in this year or maybe next year march 24 on a longer term basis okay. i hope it was so easy to take casa ratios by 10 percent in one year uh, yeah. Large banks struggle to even take it by a few basis points here and there, so it will not happen. Okay, so in fact, let me let me. It's a good question, so let me respond to it a little differently. This percentage is always a uh, uh, this thing because uh, your first question was, can it grow by twenty percent? Suppose it grow by twenty percent, can Casa ratio uh, uh, go up? Uh, by that much quantity, answer is no, because uh, then you cannot see CASA is a gradual movement, right? CASA will come over a period of time, it's like a, uh, uh, a drop, drop kind of a thing that will come. But if our asset book grows, then we need FDs to cover the uh, 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 liability side. So CASA ratio will be a little volatile for us till we settle down to a steady growth on the asset side and we settled down to a lot of customer acquisition on the uh, liability side. So I will say that uh, uh, it's a combination of asset growth, correspondingly liability growth, and then CASA ratio. We have to see all three ratios together. Uh, on a standalone basis, CASA will continue to grow the way you are going. For example, uh, you saw average CASA grew by 10% quarter on quarter. Uh, year on year, CASA grew by 15%. I can assure you that we'll grow faster than that. But if the balance sheet grows much faster than that, then CASA ratio may be stable at the same level. So it's a, it's a question of uh, the uh, headline growth of the, of, the, of the balance sheet. Okay, okay, got it. That was helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Alok Shah from Monarch Network Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. And sir, congrats on a good set of numbers. Uh, I had two questions primarily. Uh, one is when I look at your corporate exposure, uh, the top three sectors are textile, construction, and infra. Uh, uh, we just wanted to. NBFC also is there. NBFC. Yeah, yeah. yeah NBFC. Yeah, 8.9%. Yeah, 8 so uh, while we understand the health of NBFCs as we hear some other uh, NBFC players, what's your experience of the corporate in these three sectors, the textile, construction, and infra? Uh, and maybe if you could add there further between uh, the state-owned construction infra activities and central government-owned uh, construction infra activities. So, we have not seen any stress in our wholesale book. So if we can look at it though, so we have, would have substantially increased our exposure to these sectors. We have not seen any major corporate accounts going, even uh, it is not under uh, SMA position. So maybe at a certain extent, a few SME accounts are uh, 
falling under this category but by and large that we have not seen any threat in any of these accounts sir. our uh, portfolio is robust and uh, it may not uh, cause us any concern as of now so uh, uh, the other other side of your question is how do you see the growth uh, in balance sheet from which segments etc on the wholesale side so i look at it this way almost uh, almost 40% of our corporate book is uh, nbfc okay so uh, uh, and, and and i i see as interest rates going up uh, you know uh, that book will continue to do well right i mean in terms of uh, they will be dependent on bank credits and things like that because for them the other funding avenues will dry up uh, so banks will be at an advantage on nbfc funding uh, having said that we don't want to take it up beyond where we are so we are looking at other segments as well um uh, road transportation we are looking at hand projects which are uh, in uh, uh, national highway hand projects nhai we are looking and we understand the uh, the 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 textile business extremely well it's almost like the way we understand gold loan business we understand this business well uh, so to that extent uh, we have uh, we have people who understand this so that that uh, helps us we know that the commodity prices has come down the cotton prices has come down to some extent so that's why some of the liquidations have come down but that's okay that's good for the industry so we have no problem in fact we had worries when the prices are going up uh because at the end of the day the credit is more important than the growth in the business uh also we are looking a very clear segmental approach in terms of healthcare in terms of so we what we are doing on the wholesale side is we are building up our coverage strategy and we are building lot more uh, uh coverage in uh, western part of the country northern part of the country and south wherever we are already strong we are going to leverage that. so uh, also our securitization book is doing well so between all of these i think the wholesale uh, book is very small so to that extent uh, it should not be a problem to get businesses from um, this segments where we are talking about what we are looking at is basically increasing our coverage little bit more and creating a little more distribution across the segments uh, so okay this is uh, i had another question which was more on the gold loan side um, so could you kind of help us understand the client profile you know because if i look at the uh, zoom map around uh, the aum and the number of clients uh, so you know it's typically on the high side so what is the client profile is it more an sme client who comes for a gold loan uh, a bit of some understanding there okay no our uh, client profile is not so much of sme that will be very small most of these will be retail in nature uh, uh, there will be some who has uh, you know uh, uh, in our kanakdhara gold loan uh, product there will be uh, some of the uh, businesses which you are talking about and that also we are consciously not growing we are bringing it down uh, but otherwise most of them are retail our segmentation if you ask me it will be between where the nbfcs are and between the large private banks are somewhere in between is our sweet spot and uh, because our operational efficiency and capability is well uh, customers are satisfied with us for example uh, as our um, uh, as mr rajinder had used to tell this uh, again and again that uh, uh, auction is not an option provided to know the customers well and because we went through and we proved it last year that mm. uh, we didn't do too much of options still we managed to recover most of the money because this gold is very dear to these retail customers so this customers our ability to renew these customers is very high the customer loyalty is very high with us and through reference we get more business so overall in short what it means is stable uh, product uh, stable that's what franchise uh, loyal customer franchise growing customer franchise based on uh, uh, retail uh, reference and uh, sme part is uh, small here and hence to the extent consistent and the quality of the book is good and our segmentation is between the uh, uh, top end private sector banks and the ndfcs uh, so if i could just add two more questions to this uh, one is uh, the gold loan is it more to the repeat customers Uh, or i mean there is a new addition of new customers as well but uh, we've seen that with a lot of other banks and nbfc there is an element of repeat customers on the gold on side and the second is uh, so you know with whatever you talked about what's the average ticket size of gold on customers 
is it at, is it like a lakh to two lakh rupee or on the higher side? Yeah. So uh, uh, first question first, which is the uh, repeat customer. Uh, obviously, you cannot grow a gold on book of twenty six percent by uh, just uh, doing repeat customers. We get uh, enough new add on customers. And uh, if you look at it, our tonnage growth has been around 20%, and our business growth is around 23%. I mean, volume growth. What it means is that we are getting a lot of new gold also to the bank, and most of it will come from new customers. Okay. So to that extent, we have a sales machinery which is going and getting new customers. Also, branches do it through referral selling uh, through our own loyal customers, which I have mentioned. The second question about ticket size, I exactly don't have the number, but I think it's around one lakh, one point one lakh or one point two lakh, if I remember it correctly. I'm telling from my memory, but it's in that kind of a range, around one lakh. So it is not in thousands, neither in three lakhs, four lakhs, five lakhs. It is somewhere in that one lakh territory. Uh, sorry, uh, this helps. Thank you. I'm done with my question, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sharish Vaze from Money Life Advisory Service. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, um, I, my question is uh, regarding uh, gold loan and gold loan yield. So as you had mentioned that, uh, uh, that uh, the delta between uh, NBFCs and uh, uh, our yield is uh, quite high. Uh, so I wanted to understand the uh, reason for this. And secondly, how are we... Uh, looking at the competition from other larger banks who are also kind of looking at cold loans as a key growth driver gro going forward. Thanks. Yeah. The first question you said is NBFC yields are higher or yield is not so high. Am I, have I got it right? Uh, yes, sir. I wanted to know the reason for yeah. this. Yeah. The reason is, see, banks will are very, very highly governed by uh, RBI and regulators because we are not only in the business of gold loan. We have to do many other businesses and we have to be absolutely 100% uh, clear on compliance and processes, on governance and everything, whichever business we do, right? So to that extent, uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, ring fencing we have to do in terms of processes and governance. That's why, uh, you know, we cannot always do all the businesses. Uh, 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 which if you are, don't have a bank license, you can take those chances. We cannot take those chances. Also, we are not in those uh, uh, small ticket sizes uh, uh, where some of the NBFCs play, which is actually the money lender community, you know, where the money lenders, instead of that, the interest rates which some of the NBFCs are charging is much lesser. We are not playing in that, uh, in that segment. Uh, coming to your other question, whether it is SBI or uh, BNB or uh, I say or some of these other banks, they are also getting into gold loan. See, the uh, business is large enough for everybody to have their own share of pie. Uh, and for us, the kind of focus, the kind of loyalty base which you have, the kind of markets, it's very loyalty driven, this business, okay? So uh, they will continue to do what they want to do. And once happens is because we'll remain focused on this. Other banks, uh, they will uh, do it and then once the wholesale business starts picking up and all that for their growth at the end of the day at their balance sheet even a one lakh crore is nothing for us even a seven thousand crore is 42 percent so the focus which we give to do to these customers and to this business is very different compared to some, some of these huge balance sheet large banks and i actually launched gold loan in hcfc in 2005 and uh, I can tell you that uh, some of these large, and I was actually running in Axis also, Gold Loan uh, uh, was a part of my retail assets portfolio. The focus we see in this bank at every branch level, that focus cannot be there in those banks because that's a very small portion of their overall balance sheet. So focus helps and our knowledge, understanding, operation, cultural processes is very different. So that does not worry me at all. We should be able to do well in our Gold Loan and we'll continue to do well. Having said that, we'll diversify and we cannot be a single product bank. So we will have all products eventually across the retail, uh, retail uh, uh, you know, bouquet of products. Uh, thanks, sir. Uh, my second question is regarding the uh, demand for gold loans outside of our key geographies of uh, Tamil Nadu and uh, Kerala. So gold loan is a very popular product in these geographies. How are we uh, seeing the demand outside of these geographies as we expand our branch network? Yeah. So if you see our gold loan portfolio in Tamil Nadu is as big as Kerala. Okay. 
and uh, if not more, I have to just check, but it's broadly similar kind of a range. And uh, and we are just uh, kind of a, uh, getting our uh, you know distribution right in uh, Tamil Nadu at this point of time. So. Uh, uh, so in the whole of South, I think there is enough opportunity in Gold Loan and we are we are growing our uh, uh, Gold Loan book uh, faster in outside Kerala, in Tamil Nadu and some of these other locations in the first place when you look at overall South. Looking at West and North, we will have Gold Loan branches, we will have Gold Loan products, but those are the markets also will look at liability, also will look at assets, also will look at other businesses, etc. Uh, and hence, yes, uh, uh, primary growth will come from south, but in other locations also, Goldon is picking up, and uh, we will uh, will 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 continue to do that. That's why I'm saying that as we expand our uh, geography and distribution, uh, the other products will also pick up, and we will continue to grow do our uh, Goldon growth. Somewhat, see what happens is on the base. Even if you do much lesser Goldon in a north and a west compared to south, but that thing adding on to the denominator, right? So that itself will help. Plus, the existing base in Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and some of these other places will 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 will, will also help. So we have Kerala, 36 percent. So Mr. Divakar is giving me the numbers. As we are talking, what I told broadly is correct. That Kerala is 38 percent, Tamil Nadu is 36 percent, and rest are uh, Maharashtra is around 15 percent, and rest is equally distributed. But if you look at the, uh, the time machine. You will see that uh, Tamil Nadu has grown much faster than uh, Kerala on gold loans as well because it has almost caught up with 36 and 38. There is hardly any difference. So if you execute it right, actually Tamil Nadu is a very high potential for the gold loans as well, and we are expanding there big time. Got it. Got it, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. I'll get back into the game. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was our last question for today. I will now hand the conference to the management for closing comments. Thank you, Manish, and thank you, everybody, for uh, attending our uh, Key One FY23 uh, uh, Investor Conference, uh, Results Conference, and uh, we would be happy to take any further questions. Uh, you can always get in touch with us for any further questions, whatever you uh, want to understand. Uh, uh, in short, what I can say is that whatever the journey which you have started, uh, we will embark on this journey, and you will see every year our uh, uh, the franchise uh, mix is changing. Uh, we are looking at growth. We are looking at lot more uh, profitable customers, and we are looking at leveraging our full service banking franchise and the banking license what we have on a pan India basis. So with that, I think uh, the growth is given, and our primary focus will be on growth and quality of the portfolio. These two. Uh, primary focus. At the same time, we'll also try to manage the cost along the way, but we will not uh, shy away from investments and we'll not shy away from special investments into uh, distribution, into customer acquisition, and into technology. That's the most important thing. We will not shy away from that. So, thank you very much for attending our uh, uh, results investor meeting and look forward to see you again next quarter. Thank you very much. On behalf of Access Capital Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.